pareidolia. It is an unfamiliar word used to describe a very familiar phenomenon. Every day we are presented with a multitude of vague and random stimuli. Occasionally, we may perceive some of them as significant and meaningful. We perceive clouds to take on the shape of animals and people. Random patterns in nature can also seem familiar. And the design of several man-made objects seems to look back at us with an expressive face. But do these patterns mean anything at all, or could it all just be a trick of the mind? It turns out that our brains are exceptionally good at recognizing faces. In the presence of vague and ambiguous stimuli, the brain takes on the task of filling in the gaps. The area of our brain responsible for facial recognition is the fusiform gyrus, seen here in red. It is located within Brodmann area 37, part of the temporal and occipital lobe. This area also helps us to perceive emotions in facial stimuli. Damage to this area may result in a disorder known as prosopognosia, the loss of one's ability to recognize faces. When our brains perceive faces in random patterns, it is known as a type 1 error, or a false positive. Type 1 errors are used in statistics, but can also be used to describe cognitive errors. In this case it refers to the mistake made by our brain when we see something that doesn't actually exist. This is also known as a rejection of the null hypothesis. When our perceptions confirm the existence of something that reality contradicts, we call this a type 1 false positive. So why does our brain do this? It has been hypothesized that it is a survival technique. Over the course of human evolution, it has proved beneficial to discern friend from foe with split-second accuracy. The ability to detect potential dangers can make all the difference as to whether one lives or dies. In the days of early humans, it was either hunt or be hunted. It is far better to mistake two lights in the distance as belonging to a predator, allowing us to escape to safety than it is to be oblivious and possibly be killed. Our survival depends on these autonomic instincts, and so sometimes mistakes can be a rather good thing. Random patterns occur everywhere. Whether we find meaning in them depends on our past experiences and what we've seen before. For example, it is highly unlikely that a remote tribe in Africa, with little to no influence from the outside world, would recognize the shape of this flame and who it appears to resemble. We see what we want to see from our own subjective experiences and by what we're told to expect. Remember, perceptions are often based on our own subjectivity, and do not necessarily reflect an objective reality.